incredible exclamation on the Mountain West men's basketball season as Utah State, in a game that goes down to the wire, tops the fifth ranked team in the country and the number one team in this tournament, San Diego State 59. To 56. Hello, everybody. I'm Jesse Kurtz of the Mountain West Network alongside Nate Kretkin of the uh, Mountain West Radio Network and Altitude Sports Radio in Denver. Nate, what a game and what a finish that we just saw. I got, just got done calling that game over on the Mountain West Radio Network, and I cannot believe what we just saw. Uh, but Sam Merrill going for 27 points tonight. Um, we don't have the all-tournament team in front of us. He's going to be the yeah. tournament MVP, going for 27 this evening. Uh, but he hit the game winner right in the face of K.J. Fagan. You see it right here. Fagan giving him no space. K.J. probably the best perimeter defender in this entire conference. Merrill hitting that from NBA range on an ISO play. It put Utah State up by three. And then you see this. The inbounds play, Malachi Flynn heaving <laughs> from half court and I, millimeters uh, yeah, away. No As that thing was halfway down, it was in the cylinder. It bounced out. Somehow it doesn't go down. What a look for Malachi Flynn. Uh, Utah State back-to-back -back champions of the Mountain West Tournament. And you just cannot say enough about the game, about the career of Sam Merrill as he went for 27 points tonight on a night where really outside of Kada, nobody else from Utah State gave a real significant offensive addition to what they did. Yeah, and this is a team that went down by a bunch. They opened up on a 7-2 run to start this game, and they went on a heck of a field goal drought where they didn't score for 10 plus minutes. It was a 22 to 4 run for you uh, for San Diego State. Unbelievable. They go on a uh, run at the end of the first half and the second half and they ultimately are the ones that are going to be cutting down the nets. Craig Smith, Sam Merrill, Namias Keda and company are out on the uh, court right now getting ready to take the uh, the trophy from Commissioner Craig Thompson. We're going to get some video of the big celebration at center court as the trophy is going to be passed. But Utah State going back to back. Both wins coming against San Diego State. And obviously the Aztecs, one of the top teams in the country for Utah State to be playing for their tournament lives, their NCAA tournament lives, and punch that automatic ticket. This team's got some guts. At the start of the day, Joe Lenardi had Utah State first four out. Jerry Palm had them last four in. Uh, the bubble is popped. You can tear all that up. doesn't matter anymore because Utah State gets the automatic bid. Uh, for San Diego State, the question remains, will it be a one seed or a two seed? Ultimately, in the NCAAs, uh, no matter what, we know that they're in. Uh, but here's the Mountain West Conference, a two-bid league, as Utah State is going dancing. I had a chance to talk with, with Craig Smith yesterday about you, know, you don't want to leave this up to the committee. You want it in your hands. And he said, I will be completely and 100% honest with you. I haven't even thought about it. And, you know, as a coach, you, you can't think about that, right? You've got to go into it thinking, we've got to take this out. We know we can get into the tournament if we win this thing. And they face an uphill climb. And one of the great guys in college basketball, Greg Smith, hands lifted up to the herd and Utah State fans here in Las Vegas. And the celebration is on in Logan once again. Every time that Craig Smith talks about this team and he talks about his love of these players, of you know, of Sam Merrill, of Abel Porter, of Diogo Brito, of Brock Miller, of Namiish Keita, Sean Bairstow coming off the bench, Alfonso Anderson, who was a factor in this game tonight. He hit two big threes in this game tonight. Alfonso Anderson going for eight points, but just the, the affection that he has for this group of players, the mental toughness of this Utah State team really struggled in the first half of this game. They were only 30% from the field. They came out in the second half. They shot 56%, and they get the victory against the third best defensive team in the country. Yeah, and I don't think you can overlook the, the way they closed the first half. You close that on a 10 to two run. If they don't get that down to single digits, they may have no shot to come back. They kind of took some of the momentum. Yeah. And, and the, the wind out of San Diego State sails a little bit going to the locker room gave them some life and then you come out the way they did in that second half 
you start chipping away, and then Sam Merrill hits a three-pointer, part of a 7-for-7 a seven seven field goal run. They take their first lead, 51-47, and then it kind of went back and forth. But how about that duel that we had between Merrill and Flynn? Utah State takes the lead with a three-pointer, and then Malachi Flynn comes down just moments later, hits a three-pointer himself. The two best guards in this league arguably going head-to-head -head with an Ottawa uh, bid into the tournament on the line. That was something special. Uh, Jesse, I'm still in disbelief. I just I can't believe the way that that basketball game ended with Merrill hitting that three and then Malachi Flynn, you mentioned him right there. Uh, he goes for 16 points tonight, two of seven from three. Uh, but that last three-point heave, I mean, barely inside 50 feet, has it halfway down and it doesn't fall. Uh, just an unbelievable finish. You see Sam Merrill getting interviewed right now at midcourt, going for 27 tonight. A, a guy that uh, <laughs> would, would love to hear what he's having to say here, but a, a guy that now has set a Mountain West record with six straight 20-plus point games. Six straight, he's gone for 20-plus. Yeah. Big reason, he's a two-time tournament MVP as we get a look at Sam Merrill's night. I, when this guy is on, boy, there is not a better pure shooter you're going to find. He he had a tough start to this game tonight as well, and then he finally got going. He scored eight straight points towards the end of the first half, a huge part of that 10-2 to run. He woke up a little bit at that point of the basketball game, and from then on out, the ISO possession with Sam Merrill was the best possession the rest of the game for Utah State. He goes for 27-6, and six, and again, the game-winning bucket. And Jesse also made history uh, tonight. He passed Brandon Heath to become the second leading scorer in the history of the Mountain West Conference, trailing only the great Jimmer Fredette of BYU. The career of Sam Merrill that he capped tonight and the career that he had in the Mountain West Conference I think it's it's fair to say it, it's one of the truly great. It's it's a you know a single handful of great careers in the history of this tournament. We're going to remember Sam Merrill for a long, long time. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons you're going to remember him, and maybe the biggest reason. Look, he's a great scorer, has been his entire career, and he's always come up big here at the tournament. But you know what he's done back to back here? He's come up big in the championship game. That's tough to do. Yeah. Everyone knew that Sam Merrill was the guy for Utah State, and we saw Utah State. Uh, bring two guys on him at the perimeter, saying we're not letting that guy beat us. But back-to-back -back years, he's come up big in a championship game. That is extremely tough when the opposition, especially a team that is so equipped defensively like San Diego State, yeah. and they know you got to guard number five, and he still comes up big. K.J. Fagan has drawn the toughest assignment yep. uh, for San Diego State all season long. Tonight, uh, he drew Sam Merrill, and... Uh, uh, you know, you look down and you say, wow, Merrill went for 27. Fagan must have had a bad night defensively. I, I would argue that's completely wrong. 100%. K.J. Fagan had a great game defensively. Sometimes great offense just beats great defense, and that's what we saw with Sam Merrill tonight as Utah State will start to cut the nets down for the second consecutive year. First time, by the way, that Utah State has won uh, conference tournaments two years in a row since 2000 and 2001 in the Big West under Stu Morrill. So uh, Craig Smith in just two years at Utah State has put together quite the run already. Well, he has, and he's an easy guy to root for. The way that he handles himself, win or lose, the way those kids play hard for him, he's entertaining to watch. If you just set a camera on him on the sideline, the way he's mimicking, trying to guard, moving up and down, uh, the court, you know, uh, shuffling his feet. He gets into this game as much as his players do, and an easy guy to root for. And you see Abel Porter, a guy who just kind of gutted things out. He was injured. He played the minutes that he could, and that's just leadership and toughness that comes straight from the top in Craig Smith. This, by the way, uh, last game in the Mountain West Conference for Abel Porter tonight, even though he's technically a junior in terms of his eligibility. Uh, Abel has already said he's going to walk away from college basketball after this year. His wife is due to give birth. I believe this summer, and so uh, Abel Porter wrapping up a great Utah State career with a conference championship. All right, let's go down to the madness and Bridget Howard, who's standing by with Demias Kata. Demias, you came back to Utah State this year to get another crack at the NCAA tournament, and here you are. How does it feel? Amazing. Um, last year, last year I felt, I felt like we had some unfinished business. Um, and now, and after all the struggle that we had this year, this just this is just amazing. Um, having to 
having all the ups and downs that we have during the whole year, all the injuries, all the problems that we have, I felt that this is well more than deserved. And now we still have a finished business to take care of in the tournament, and we're ready for it. You guys beat the Aztecs tonight, and you were the, only the second team this season to do it. How were you able to get it done? We just, we just played our, oh, <laughs> I don't want to say it, but you know what I meant. <laughs> we just played hard, and we just tried to, like, we just tried to out-tough them. And we, I think we actually did it, not the whole game, but mostly on the second half. And that's when we, and that's when champions are made on the second half in the last, and in the crunch time. You were able to finish when you needed it most. And talk to me about Sam Merrill, that kid. How big of a part of this team amazing, has he been? Amazing, amazing, amazing. He's a great player and an awesome teammate and a better person. I love him to death. And he, and he, and pretty much in the tournament, he just saved us every game. Whenever we needed him, he made big shot after big shot, and that, and that's the key for us to win. Well, congratulations and go celebrate. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Amias Keita, 15 points here for the Aggies, and you look back at what he did last night, 20 plus, had five blocks. Talk with uh, Craig Smith about what a luxury it is to have him as a defensive presence. Boy, he's tough to score on. Utah State has won nine of their last 10 games uh, coming down the stretch, and the health of Kata has just been everything. He went for 15 and eight tonight with three block shots. He was a monster. He got going in that second half and was really a big part of this victory. He absolutely was. Back down to Bridget, there with the head coach. Coach, you said all week that you were excited to see us up on stage. How excited are you now to be back-to-back -back Mountain West tournament champions? Well, it's pretty remarkable. Um, being a history major, I always look at the history, and we have such a great, the Mountain West Conference has such a great history of men's basketball, unbelievable tradition. It's been a long time since the team has repeated in the basketball, in the conference tournament championship. For us to do that is incredibly special, and it's a memory we'll remember forever. You guys knocked off the Aztecs, and only for their second loss of the season, how were you guys able to get it done? A lot, a lot of perseverance and a lot of patience in that first half. Uh, you know, the game started off, uh, both teams like every way fight. You're kind of feeling each other out. You're trying to measure each other up. They hit a couple threes. We called a timeout. And then we just couldn't score. But I thought we had great looks at the basket. And I think the key part of the game tonight was just the way we finished that first half. That burrito three to end the half was huge. And we were only down eight at halftime, and it felt like we should have been down about 18. And then we just slugged away, slugged away, and Merrill made some big time plays, as he always does. Sam Merrill has been a huge part of this team. What are you going to miss most about him? Everything. Uh, uh, he puts the ball in the hole. He's a phenomenal defensive player. He doesn't get nearly enough credit for how he guards. But above all that, I can't wait to go to the gym every day to see him. He just he loves to compete. He's a phenomenal teammate. And uh, the dude's just a winner in everything he does. You guys get an extra week off before yeah. Selection Sunday. What's ahead for your team? Uh, well, at least two days off uh, <laughs> to rest and recover. But, you know, we've said all along, we've, we've dealt with a lot of injuries this year. I, I feel like we just keep climbing and keep getting better week by week. And now we have another opportunity this week to keep getting better. So that's what's exciting. But for now, we're going to enjoy this for about 48 hours and uh, get back after it on Tuesday. Well, go enjoy it, Coach. Congratulations. Back to back. Go Aggies. Go Aggies. Oh, yeah. I love the reaction. This guy has all kinds of energy. He loves the fans that have flooded here uh, at the Thomas and Mac. And, you know, it's a special team. Speaking of special, let's go back down. The tournament MVP, Sam Merrill with Bridget Howard. Sam, you came back to Utah State to get another crack at this NCAA tournament. How does it feel to get another win here? I mean, we put everything into this, and it wasn't always perfect this year. Um, there were times where it was in doubt about whether we were going to go to the tournament, but we knew we had the we had the guys to find a way to win three games in three days, and uh, we wanted to leave no doubt to the selection committee, and we did that, so it's great. You knocked off the Aztecs. How were you guys able to finish this one out? I mean, you were that three you had there at the end clutch to say the least yeah I mean I hit that shot but we did that on the defensive end like giving up 56 points to a team like that is just incredible and we had so many guys step up like it's 
Basketball is a team game, and Alfonso hit big shots. Nimi played great. Abel's been playing through a broken back, and he and he was able to play and make some plays. So, you know, we just found a way as a team to do it. You, oh, well, there's your teammate here. Here, we'll bring you in on this one, Diego. Tell me. How? Talk to me about Sam Merrill here. How big of a player has he been for this team, and what's he like as a teammate to be able to celebrate this together? He's definitely what you could call the perfect teammate, the perfect leader, the perfect player. I don't know. I've never met anybody that played as good and was so humble, and he was such a good friend. I love Sam. I really do. You guys are headed back to another NCAA tournament. How does it feel to be able to be heading back there? Oh, it's like I said, it means everything. We put everything into this. Uh, we want another shot at it after what happened last year, and we're hoping we can make the most of it. Diogo, you've been a huge part of this Utah State team. What does it mean to be able to walk out with another tournament championship title? Like, like we said before, this is what we dreamed for since the beginning of the year. We went through some ups, we went through some really lows, but we stuck together, we kept the course of the season. We made sure that when the tournament came, we were playing our best basketball and we were the most together. And that's what, exactly what happened. Well guys, congratulations. You're back to back Mountain West tournament Thank champions. You. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jesse. They talked about playing their best basketball when it matters most. Mid-season, there were a lot of people that wrote Utah State off. It was a team that was heavily injured, yep. um, needed to get healthy. Namiya Shkada maybe being the, uh, the the biggest headliner in that. But you could see them start to build that momentum. You could see them being the team that they were last year. And they came into this tournament. There were a lot of people that thought, you know what, this team, when healthy, can be the best team on any given night, and they proved it here today. It's a team that got blown out at Air Force. It's a team that had an 18-point lead with under four minutes to go and somehow lost at home to Boise State in overtime. Um, but 9-1 and one over their last 10 games. Diogo Brito right there, who's always so fun. Yeah. I didn't realize this until I looked at the score sheet. He had exactly three points tonight. But those three points were so critical. It was that three, three to beat the buzzer right at the end of the half. That was his only bucket of the basketball game, but it was so critical. It was a 10-2 run right before the half. They were able to cut it down to a seven-point game, and uh, I think they scored the first seven points of the second half and really just outscored San Diego State 38 to 27 the rest of the way there in the second half to win it 59 to 56. Well, I think you just touched on a very important uh, aspect of this team. The unselfish, how about this moment? Good night. <laughs> oh, that's special right there. Craig Smith cutting down the net with his daughter. That, that's a special moment. But you're talking about an unselfish team. Last night against Wyoming at one point, they had 12 assists on 14 field goals. They'll share the basketball, they'll find the right spot, and then nail it when the moment is right. Elementary school teachers around America cringing at that scissor safety shown by <laughs> Craig Smith. And there it is. Second year in a row, Craig Smith has gotten to climb the ladder and cut down the net. And he tosses it, and needless to say, Kata comes up with it. Uh, he talked about patience and perseverance. And, you know, this is a team that over the last three games saw opposing teams go on some runs, right? And they were able to just weather the storm and then make a run themselves. We saw that in the first two games, and then certainly here today at uh, Utah State, a special, special team, a special coach, a special bunch of players that have not got, now gone back-to-back. It lost last year in an 8-9 matchup uh, to Washington. They'll get another crack at it this year in the NCAA tournament. I think the fact that the tournament was a week earlier this year it gives them eight days off until Selection Sunday. They won't play for two weeks. That's so critical for Utah State, an opportunity to rest up a little bit, get Abel Porter a little bit healthier. Namish Keita could certainly use the time off, although he's really playing his best basketball of the season here at the right time. And, uh, hey, old man Sam Merrill, give him a little bit of a break going into the tournament as he wins tournament MVP. Yeah, he was special, and the Aggies and I were just paraded by us on the way to the locker room for what I would assume is going to be quite the celebration in the locker room. Let's take a look at the bracket and see how we got here in 2020. We started on March 4th with 11 teams. There's only one team standing. It's the Utah State Aggies. They took out the seventh seed, New Mexico. They took out Wyoming, the Cinderella story. 
the 11 seed. And then they took out San Diego State, the fifth ranked team in the country. So it is Utah State going back to back. They are the champions of the Mountain West, punching the ticket to the NCAA tournament. I want to thank our entire crew here in Las Vegas, Nate Breckman, Bridget Howard, Associate Commissioner Brian Tripp of the Mountain West, along with Dennis Trapani, Adam Parker, and Caleb Howard. What a week it's been in Las Vegas as the Utah State Aggies are the champions of the Mountain West once again. Good night from Las Vegas.